What up, it's Shankster94, and welcome to another reaction video. So in this one, we're going to be reacting to the Capcom showcase that was recently released. Specifically, the Resident Evil portions of it. So this reaction video is going to be unique compared to most of the past, because here's the thing. I haven't seen this footage I'm about to look at, but I do know the main points, because my Twitter feeds and my own Discord server spoiled a lot of the content for me. So I already know what to expect, but... I haven't seen the footage, so that's what I'm going to react to. And here's also what's going to separate this from other reaction videos, is the fact that instead of watching it all the way through with no pauses and then reveal my discussions, I am going to be pausing periodically throughout the showcase and share my opinions that I have, either of something I just saw in that moment, or when we get through the whole piece, I will share my opinions then and there. All right, so I hope you guys enjoy this reaction slash breakdown slash overview. Without further ado, let's get into it. Rotate my camera. Here we go. Hello, everyone. I'm Tsuyoshi Kanda, the producer of Resident Evil Village. Producer, all right. Thanks to all of our fans, Village has sold over 6 million units worldwide. Very successful game. Everyone on the team is incredibly happy to see so many people enjoy the game. I'm one of them. Thank you for your support. Absolutely. The Resident Evil series continues to bring fun experiences to people around the world. We want longtime fans and people who are new to Resident Evil to enjoy this storied franchise. Yep. Let's start with this video. All right, what's coming for Resident Evil Village? Like I know already, but let's break it down, shall we? 16 years after he left. All right, we got Rose Winters. All right, so they're expanding on her. I can show you things even Chris doesn't know. That ending cutscene of the original campaign. I want to live a normal life. All right, so what kinds of struggles are sh is she gonna go through? What is she doing at Castle Domitresk? going on here. Whoa. What's going on here? You look just like me. Oh, what? So, with what I saw just now, I'm getting extreme Little Miss vibes from Resident Evil Revelations 2. We saw like a duplicate of herself, possibly hallucinating or it's all in her head, something like that. I've been hearing a lot of people saying this is like a hive mind thing going on here, and I can see that. All right, let's continue. Oh, now we have a new little rabbit to pursue. What the hell is Duke doing here? <laughs> Shadows of Rose. Okay, so yeah. So yeah, like I said, it's giving me Little Miss vibes and other scenarios, you know, side scenarios where you're playing a character that was just introduced or had very brief moment in the main story. But the fact that the Duke here looks like he's being presented as a villain, this could tie in to the original concept that he was going to be the fifth Lord. This is another thing I've been seeing in a lot of discussions. A lot of things that I'm going to be saying here are probably going to be regurgitated opinions that a lot of people have because I'm with a majority of the Resident Evil community, honestly, when it comes to my opinions of the franchise. But yeah, again, since this is possibly all in her head and everything, I don't know if he's gonna be canonically a villain of any sort, or if that is just some crazy stuff, and we'll see how it goes. All right, now let's react to new content coming to The Mercenaries. It's tough. All right. So we're going to be able to play as Chris Redfield. That's going to be neat. It's expanding the mercenaries, so it's going to bring me back to that and increase its replay value. And yeah, curious what to see. All right, continue. <laughs> oh man, we're also going to be able to play as Heisenberg and Dami Tresk, so that's going to be funny. So real quick, I'm going back. 
Okay, that right there. I love how the perspective is true with her nine foot tall height. Like you're gonna be towering over all the enemies. This is throwing me back to GoldenEye when people played as odd jobs, so they got the short advantage and people had to look down all the time in order to get him. But yeah, the fact that she just threw this thing against all those enemies, yeah, I'm really curious to see what special abilities and attributes that these individual characters have. It may present something for me. Like, that throw right there looks like it could be part of an updated weapon review or even melee move review that I'll do in the future. All right, let's continue. Next. Additional orders. That's what it's called. Okay. Well, sweet. And now... Oh, boy. Ah, uh, yes. Third-person mode. Okay, so... They literally went back into the game, and we're going to be able to experience it just like Resident Evil 2 Remake and Resident Evil 3 Remake. Yep, there you go. And we officially, canonically, can see Ethan now. That's going to be really interesting. So Resident Evil Village Gold Edition, I guess, is encompassing all that content that we just saw. Yeah, Resident Evil has a thing with Gold Editions. They first did it in Resident Evil 5, and then they did it again with Resident Evil 7. So, it's cool. Capcom really likes the Gold Editions of Resident Evil, and they always come packed full of content. Alrighty. So, yep, Winter's Expansion. Oh, an RE-verse. Okay. October 28th, 2022. So, that's when it's all coming about. So, they do make a brief mention of RE vs. Gen after keeping us hanging for well over a year since the beta release and everything. Kind of stupid that all it is was a little title card, no gameplay or whatsoever. Doesn't really instill a whole lot of confidence, you know? But they showed it, so they better keep to it. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. All right. Let's see what else they have to show with the showcase. Sorry to keep you waiting. <laughs> We're happy to reveal the DLC for Resident Evil Village we promised last June. He's speaking directly to the impatient scrubs that the Resident Evil community is full of, by the way. We think this new experience will be worth the wait. This DLC includes three major features. All right, so he's breaking it First, down for us. The third person mode. Many people asked for this, and we were able to add it into the game. So... The modders who already did this, how do they feel about it now? They still get credit for doing it first, but the fact that Capcom went back into it and did it themselves, I think that's super awesome. Now, you'll be able to see Ethan as he desperately fights for survival. Players that have already experienced Ethan's journey can enjoy the new perspective and animations too. Nice. The Mercenaries returns with additional orders in an arcade-style action game where focus has been put on the exhilarating feeling of defeating relentless hordes of enemies. New stages are included, as well as additional playable characters, such oh. as Chris Redfield and Heisenberg. So we're also going to get some additional stages. Oh man, they're expanding it a good amount. Of course, Lady Dimitrescu will be there too. <laughs> We've really fueled this mode up. Oh, uh, okay. So, yeah, with Heisenberg and Dami Tresk for sure, I'm definitely going to be cooking something up in terms of content. Enjoy looking down on your foes from over nine feet above as Lady Dimitrescu slashes her <laughs> enemies aside. <laughs> See, that's melee right there. The third edition is one you've surely been waiting for. An additional story, Shadows of Rose. Today, let me introduce just a bit of this story. All righty. Rose, the beloved daughter of the main protagonist, Ethan, is now a grown-up main character in this new story mode. In this sequel to the main story of Village, you can experience Rose's struggles with the terrifying powers she was born with. Hmm. To break free of the curse of her powers, she enters the consciousness of the Megamycete. Wow, okay. There, she meets a girl who looks just like her. In this mysterious realm of consciousness, time and space is warped beyond recognition. Rose is guided by a being who calls himself Michael, who might be of assistance with removing her powers. Hmm. Shadows of Rose is set completely in a third-person perspective. Okay. In the realm of consciousness, you won't only face creatures, but the world itself seems to be attacking you. Wow. Enjoy the horror of the world itself being your greatest enemy. Okie dokie. 
So yeah, that adds to the whole hive mind thing. It really is happening pretty much in her head or within the consciousness of the mega mice. That is really interesting. So we're going to be reliving its experiences like during the village incident or something, I presume, considering we're revisiting areas that Ethan went to and Rose was a baby in pieces and flasks at the time. So curious to see how this goes. How will Rose find freedom from her mysterious powers? Ooh. Yeah, she mentioned her powers. The DLC for Resident Evil Village Winter's Expansion includes all three of these major additions. In addition, Resident Evil Village Gold Edition, a bundle of Winter's Expansion with the base game, will be released simultaneously. The release date is planned for October 28th, 2022. Resident Evil RE Verse oh, here we go. will also begin service on the same date, October 28th, 2022. We hope that you are looking forward to it. About freaking time. Alrighty. How did you like that? I liked it a lot. Also, as already announced, we are working on making the main story of Village available on Mac so that even more people can enjoy Resident Evil. Oh, there you go. Give the Mac users a chance. In addition, the main story of Village is planned to be playable on PlayStation VR 2. We're working hard on bringing you the ultimate immersive experience worthy of next gen in Resident Evil Village. Jeez. So look forward to future announcements. Up next, a game that was announced just a few days ago. Okay. So they're probably about to cover Resident Evil 4 Remake now again. So final thoughts on that last thing, the fact that Village is being developed for the VR. That's nice because considering Resident Evil 7 Biohazard came out with VR, at least for the PlayStation version, I was really surprised that Village wasn't made the same way. Considering it's a direct sequel to Ethan's story and everything, from what I've seen, Resident Evil Village VR looks very similar to Resident Evil 4 VR. That was released a bit ago. All right, let's react to what's next. Okay, so as I suspected, this is now about Resident Evil 4 Remake. So I'm sure they're just going to show the trailer again right now. And I do know that this trailer here is barely different from the first one we got. There's only like two additional scenes or something like that with Leon actually in view. So, I'm not just going to react to this. I'll actually give some thoughts on everything I'm seeing this time. Which will sort of be drawn from a lot of people's opinions already. Alright, Resident Evil 4. Here we go. Thunder Wonder Roost. I've located Baby Eagle. So right then and there, Baby Eagle is most likely Ashley and Condor 1 is Leon. Roost is the government. Or Hunnigan. Or something like that. All right, got Leon in the president's office with President Graham. Very reminiscent of that scene in Infinite Darkness. I love the much darker tone that they're going for here. All right, got Ashley running through the wilderness. Around a part of the village. There was something there, obviously. Leon. Ashley again who I mistook as Ada once. And the iconic first house. You can tell that, that this is what that is. The very first house Leon comes across, and he comes across Don, whoever I am blanking on his name, which is so sad because Resident Evil 4 is like my third favorite game of all time. And then, yeah, a lot of people are commenting on his hair. It's like all patchy and everything. Yes, okay, the village right there. Let me go back. The village here looks phenomenal in the RE engine. And yeah, I did hear that it is like exactly modeled after its original counterpart. And people have even mapped out the original houses and their locations and everything. So I'm glad that this part appears to be a one-to-one -one remake. Now, the thing about that, to expect that out of a game of this level, you're just setting yourself up for failure. That is an insanely high expectation. Resident Evil 4 has just way too many tropes. It is not going to be a 1-1. Everyone knows that, especially with this darker tone and everything. They're probably going to lose the campiness a little bit, which I am for. Shinji Mikami himself, he was shorted of his vision for this game originally. I don't think he's part of the development team, but he has mentioned some thoughts about this 
and overall, they're pretty optimistic. Guess you, me, picked the wrong spot to vacation, eh? So this is obviously Lewis Sarah with his iconic Red 9. I'm very happy this weapon is making it back into this. Makes me curious, what other weapons? Are we gonna see every weapon that was in the original somehow? I don't know, that's not how it went with either of the remakes we got before. So some weapons probably will be dropped, new ones will be added in. One weapon I really hope, along with this, that makes it in there, is the PRL-412. That was an exclusive Resident Evil 4 weapon that made the game really fun. You were God mode with the Chicago typewriter, the infinite rocket launcher, and this PRL-412, which was designed specifically to kill all the enemies in this game, and yet doesn't harm anything else. So it's a very awesome weapon when dealing with Ashley and stuff like that. But yeah, I hope the PRL-412 makes it back in. If not, at least we're getting the Red Nine. All right, and see, there's that first Ganado again, Don Diego. I don't know what it is. Put it in the comments who it was, but I do know it's Don something, and yeah, he's an iconic first Ganado. All right. So this little scene right here, it's like one of the very few scenes you get of the zealots. And yeah, a lot of people were commenting on their necks. It's like something's around it or you could see it bulging sort of. I'm really excited to see how like the Plaga spawns end up in the RE engine and everything. I wonder if it's going to be utterly grotesque, very detailed. I can only imagine. <laughs> okay. So the only scene of my number one Resident Evil woman, Ada Wong, woman in red. So clearly they're dropping her iconic dress look, which I understand a lot of fans are really ticked off about. That was one of her best outfits. It wasn't my personal favorite. Mine is her Resident Evil 2 outfit, but still. I like the aesthetic they're going with here. It's like a sweater vest or whatever, and it just seems a lot more appropriate for this mission overall. So I'm happy with it. All right, Leon in the boat, obviously on the lake where Delago is featured. I missed this in the first time I reacted to the trailer. And yeah, I have to say, I like the way the water looks. Leon's laying there, obviously writhing in pain or just resting after what he just went through. So I wonder if this is before or after his fight with the Delago. I'm assuming after, considering he's laying there like he did in the original, sort of. But yeah, got that coming. All right, Big Cheese or Bitoris Mendez. Really glad he's back and he's towering as ever. Now, I kind of agree with some of the fan base on the cheesiness of the hat that he has. They're obviously throwing back to Mr. X here, but if they give you the ability to shoot it off like Mr. X, maybe I will enjoy it a little bit. But overall, I think it was kind of a corny decision. All right, and now we got Leon here, obviously dreaming or hallucinating that he's being taken over by the Plaga in that one scene. And now, I don't know if anyone else thought this, but I thought his hands here in this scene look a little cartoonish for some reason. It's where it wraps around his wrist, specifically. I don't know why, it makes his hands look a little bigger. They look like Sonic or Mickey Mouse hands, if you know what I mean, you know? All right, just a brief shot of Ashley's eyes close up. They're beautiful, I'll give her that. All right, and then we got that. I don't know if that is the first Ganado again, because when you compare this shot with the other one, I feel like the first one, he has longer facial hair and whatnot. So this could just be another random Ganado featured in a cutscene, or this could be the Ganado that attacks Leon and Lewis when they're tied up. Who knows? We'll see. All right. You will receive our most sacred body. And this is the voice of Sadler, obviously. It begins now. He's either talking to Leon or Ashley, we don't know. Most sacred body? It's possibly Ashley. And yep, there he is with his cane and staff. All right, you see the little RE that appeared right there, similar to like the Plaga manifestation. I think that's really awesome. And yep. Resident Evil 4 with the red and white style that's been around since Resident Evil 2 Remake. I love it. Oh, one thing, of course, I noticed that when you see all three logos, the the patterns within the letters are slightly different. And I'd, I guess they represent sort of a theme associated with all three of those games. I really love it. If I could just forget All what right, so here's happened. what's different in the trailers. Now we get a straight-on perspective of Leon in the car in that iconic scene, 
And yet, Nick Apostolides voicing him, and he has that baby face still, sort of. You know, six years later, he definitely has aged a little bit, but he still looks very young, honestly, overall to me. The pain, even for a second. And the new Ashley, of course. This time, it can be different. And yep. <laughs> I'm seeing the meme all across Twitter and everything, like this shot of Leon, a lot of fangirls and fanboys are being like, oh my god, too hot, or something like that. And yeah, this does make me think, along with a lot of other people, is this the scene where he goes, where's everyone going? Bingo? It totally yeah. looks like that, the way he's searching around and everything. And he's right next to the stake where, I think, yeah, he's right next to what looks like was a stake, but... I don't see the body there, so either this is a different area or that is the stake where the cop is posted, but maybe he deteriorated and burnt to a crisp, literally. <laughs> Who knows? Yep, we are receiving this March 24th, 2023. Okie dokie. Hi, everyone. I'm Yasuhiro Anpo, director of Resident Evil 4. All right. And I'm Yoshiaki Hirabayashi producer of Resident Evil 4. I've seen you before. This title is a reimagining of Resident Evil 4, based on the original 2005 release. Reimagining. Similar to other titles in the series, we are carefully preserving what makes the original title special, while updating it with modern flourishes for everyone to enjoy when it launches in 2023. Awesome sauce. Today, we'll reintroduce a bit of the game's story. Resident Evil 4 is set six Ooh. years after the events in Raccoon City, depicted in Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3. Yeah. The main character of the game, Leon S. Kennedy, survived the Raccoon City incident and was assigned as an agent directly under the President of the United States. Yep. Leon is dispatched to a quiet village in Europe as part of a mission to rescue the kidnapped daughter of the President. So, let me discuss real quick that one shot of him, like with the flames and everything, and him welding his iconic silver ghost. A lot of people are speculating it doesn't look quite the same as it used to. A lot of people are comparing it to a different weapon and seem to be somewhat disappointed in it. I don't know, though. The silver ghost itself was a hybrid originally of, like, two different weapons. So if they change something up, like one of the weapons it was based on, if it is still a hybrid anyway, I think it would add a new hint of freshness to it. Once again, if you're expecting 1-1, one, one, you're going to be disappointed. You shouldn't expect that. You might notice Leon is much more mature and fearless due to his past experiences. I can see that for sure. The Ganado, the main enemies of this game, wait for him. Mm. Ugh, look at the red the eyes and the details. Of being attacked by hordes of crazed Ganado is truly an iconic moment from Resident Evil. Oh yeah. In order to truly bring out the concept of terror of people controlled by madness, the Ganado have been completely redesigned. Let's take a closer look at the game itself. Alrighty. The over-the-shoulder camera returns, of course. There we go. He's got some gameplay. Leon arrives at a dense and dangerous forest. We want to nail the Ooh. feeling of loneliness and fear of not knowing what lies ahead, even more so than the original. Of course, there will also be thrilling battles. Oh, look how, look how much he was People moving his pistol. The recent battles. Okay, Leon does, did, granted he was sidestepping during that, but he does not have a lot of stability. Which does sort of throw back to the original Resident Evil 4 sometimes when he's aiming, man, he... He's like all over the place and he can't sit still. He's not a marksman like Chris. People that played the recent Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3 should find this familiar. Okay, so yeah, it's going to play just like those two Look remakes. Look forward to future announcements where we'll have more information on the game. Resident Evil 4 is being developed for PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, Series S, and PC. The release date will be March 24th, 2023. So now I see why there are quite a few people also disappointed that it appears it's only going to be for current gen consoles, not for last gen. So yeah, if you guys haven't upgraded your hardware yet, it's probably about time to do so because like this game is proving, it's going to come a day when those previous consoles are not supported anymore. That's just the way it is. We are aiming to create a Resident Evil 4 that everyone can enjoy, so please look forward to it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, so you so much. much. Domo arigato. 
<laughs> All right, so yeah, Resident Evil 4. Is there anything else? What did you think about the latest information on Resident Evil Village and Resident Evil 4? So Both far, I'm absorbing all this, and I'm really looking forward to it. For those that can't wait for the release, check out the following games. All right, now the impatient scrubs can enjoy something. Maybe. I know what this is. <laughs> yep. So Resident Evil 7, Resident Evil 2 Remake, and Resident Evil 3 Remake got next-gen upgrades, basically. <laughs> like how they switched the music track, that's funny, dude. I should probably speak over this as much as I can to avoid copyright. <laughs> but yeah, so these next-gen upgrades, what it means specifically is... Oh, I love how they used the best track from Resident Evil 3 Remake to showcase this. But yeah, they've been upgraded for for the current gen consoles, or next gen if you want to think of it like that. But let me see how they explain it. Three titles return for the latest generation. Yeah, PS5, Xbox Series X, and I guess it's just visually updated Resident on Steam. Resident Evil 7, which brought the series back to its survival horror roots. Oh and yes, absolutely, 100%. Titles, Undeniable. Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3. These three titles, built with RE Engine, return with current gen features including support for 4K, yes. high frame rate, yes. and ray tracing. I don't care about that. As Not well a lot of people care about audio that. 3D audio for an even more immersive experience. 3D audio. Okay, if you got surround These sound, I guess that's awesome. For PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and Series S beginning today. In addition, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One players can enjoy a free digital upgrade to current gen via the digital upgrade program and smart delivery. So for me personally, I have Resident Evil 7 on Xbox One, but Resident Evil 2 Remake and 3 Remake I have on PS4. So right now, I can enjoy Resident Evil 7 Biohazard with the upgrade since I do have the Series X. I currently do not have a PS5 though, so right now I can't really enjoy Resident Evil 2 and 3 Remakes unless I buy it on Xbox or on Steam. But, here's the thing, about the Steam versions I've been hearing, the ray tracing upgrade and the next gen actually screwed a lot of people because if you don't have DX12 support, I guess, it's not compatible, and they had to make a patch like immediately to re-support DX11 or turn off ray tracing. One or the other point is, if you didn't have an up-to-date system, for Steam, then you're like incapable of playing it, apparently. For PC users, an update oh. patch will be available on the same date. Okay, see, they just said. For newcomers said. and veterans of survival horror alike, we hope you enjoyed the immersion these new versions offer. Welcome to the family. <laughs> Welcome Classic. to the family. That's all for today's announcements. Okie dokie. Thank you. So that was the Resident Evil content within the Capcom showcase of 2022. So yeah, after a lot of radio silence from Capcom, finally get some things dropped, some solid release dates, and yeah, the impatient scrubs can stop whining, finally. <laughs> you notice how I keep going that? It's one of my personal tics when I'm going through my Twitter feeds and everything, is just seeing all the people saying, all right, where's Resident Evil Code Veronica remake? Where's 4 remake? Where's Gaiden remake? Where's Outbreak remake? Come on, you promised us Revelation 3. It's like, guys, they're a development team, and we're living in a day and age where games are so immersive and take months upon months of development. It's like, come on, give them a break. Anyway, I'll stop ranting about that and return to my thoughts about everything presented here. So yeah, Resident Evil Village DLC, Resident Evil 4 Remake, and of course, next-gen upgrades of all the RE Engine titles. I think this is all super awesome, and it does present a lot of opportunities for me as a content creator. Of course, Resident Evil 4 Remake, um... 
<laughs> got all of my usual stuff to do on that one. For Resident Evil 8 Village DLC, I definitely will do probably a separate weapon and possibly melee review of the DLC only, very similarly to how I did Resident Evil 7. And as for the next-gen upgrades of Resident Evil 7, 2, and 3, that itself doesn't necessarily warrant any new content from me specifically. They're just visually updated, and the best I can do is remake all my reviews for those games in 4K. That would just just be a jump from 1080p to 4k the frame rate would be the same although they claim it's going to support higher frame rates apparently up to 120 frames per second so the jump from 1080p 60 to 4k 120 could be a considerable upgrade although there's not a lot of hardware right now that could even support that that could be a while down the road so point is nothing soon is going to come from the next gen upgrades but you can guarantee stuff will be coming out from me once the village dlc gets dropped and of course resident evil 4 remake so i'm looking forward to all of this stuff I'm glad we finally got it. Oh, I'm not even mentioning Ari Verse because, see, they barely covered that in this entire showcase, as you guys saw. So it's hard for me to even speak about it because I almost forgot about it already. But that's apparently finally coming along with the Village DLC. So that's a whole nother game again. So could possibly do something. Hopefully it doesn't feel like resistance to me because otherwise it's going to get the treatment of Umbrella Core and that game. And I'm not going to do anything on it until I get to that game in the series in terms of the full plays. This is all stuff that my closest subscribers would know. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm sorry. Again, this is less of a reaction video and more of a breakdown overview for me, specifically for my channel, more or less. So there you guys go. All right, I am done talking about this. A lot to look forward to, and I am super stoked, believe me. I have, don't really have any negative opinions whatsoever to say about this. All right, guys, I really hope you enjoyed that reaction, overview, breakdown, and I'm sorry if I talk way too much for you guys. I am a commentator. I've always been. I'm very proud to be. All right, this is Shankster94, aka The Gamer Shankster. Rate, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on social media that I put next to my head here. And I will see you guys, of course, and possibly more reaction videos if we get any more release content for Resident Evil 4 Remake and Resident Evil Village DLC. We'll just see. Otherwise, we'll definitely see me in regular content I produce on my channel. Peace out. Hope you all have a good one.